The Buckeyes pour onto the field in Columbus. They have never lost to Washington State. The game today features two very bright stars. His name is Jason Gesser. His smile is as wide as his talent. The Washington State gunslinger follows in the footsteps of Mark Rippon, Drew Bledsoe, and Ryan Leaf. Ohio State's brightest new star is number 13, Maurice Claret. He exploded on the scene with a 175-yard rushing debut. The greatest opening act in Buckeye history. Now he's out to stop the Cougar Express. So it is the Pac-10 against the Big Ten. Welcome, everybody, with Gary Daniels and I, Brett Musburger. Gary, let us start with Jason Gesser. Why is he so good? Well, Brent, first of all, he's a senior, and if you check the Pac-10 record, senior quarterbacks do well in that league. And secondly, he's talented, and he does a lot of things. He can throw, go to his right, his left, he goes sidearm, he's tough to pick off, he's tough to sack. He's just a playmaker, kind of reminds you of Jake Plummer. A couple pretty good safeties for the Buckeyes. Yeah, and that's really the key for Ohio State. Two senior safeties, Donnie Nicky, Michael Doss. They have seen this offense. Purdue runs the same offense. These two guys must keep all those young Buckeyes in line. So the stage is set. A crowd in excess of 100,000 on an overcast day in Columbus, Ohio. Brent, I'm with the head coach of the Washington State Cougars, Mike Price. Mike, this is three times right, right now. <laughs> three times the size of the yeah. crowd that you're playing at home. What did you tell these kids the last thing before they stepped out on the field here? Well, like I always tell them, I love them and just go out and have some fun. Coach, good luck today. Okay, thanks, Jack. The coin toss out of the middle of the field and a very good veteran referee, Dick Honig, will run this crew. Jimmy Crockstead is his umpire and the captain's now in the center of the field. You see number two, Mike Doss for the Buckeyes. Jason Gesser there, number 17, the quarterback. He's the only three-time captain in the history of Washington State football and they played it out there in the Palouse for over a hundred years. Got a kick out of the Washington State guys, uh, Brent, yesterday when they did their walkthrough. Washington's going to uh, decline. Take but they all had their cameras. They were looking around. I think it was almost like Hoosiers. They measured the field at the same 100-yard field. Yep, they're deferring. So the Buckeyes will handle the ball here first. Jimmy Trussell, second year as a head coach at Ohio State, and the gentleman he replaced, John Cooper, is in attendance today. He and his lovely wife are upstairs here alongside in one of the booths. John doesn't get an opportunity to come back very often. So Craig Krenzel will be quarterbacking the first series, and we asked Craig what he would try to accomplish in that opening series. Very rarely do you see exactly what you're prepared for. So I think, you know, for the first series, we want to come out. We obviously want to move the ball and score. Um, you know, but a, but a bigger thing for us is going to be see what they're doing and, and get ready to adjust to what they're going to be throwing at us all game long. Craig would like to have some positive field position, but with the wind at the kicker's back, it is more likely that it will be a touchback. Adam Holiday, number four, will handle the kickoff chores for the Cougars here today with the ball down at the 35 yard line and again that breeze you probably can't tell because the flags are up very high on this stadium but if he gets it up the senior from Newberry Park California is going to ride this one into the end zone there's the breeze that we're talking about blowing from right to left at about 15 18 miles an hour and Doss one of the deep men back with Chris Gamble the wide receiver so numbers two and seven Two fine runners are set to attempt to give them field position if they get a crack at this. Along the ground, they want to kick it short. Out of bounds. And a penalty fly goes down, so not a positive start for the Cougars. And I'm rather surprised, Me Gary, too. that praise that they didn't let it ride. Absolutely. I, I, I think that, uh, you know, Ohio State, as you mentioned, had their firepower back there. Two guys that could take it to the house. But 
You know, we saw it. Remember last week, Brent, Alabama attacked right from the beginning of that game. And so Kick far, Washington bounds. State says, State to take we're going to kind of play down. it safe. Well, let us meet now the Ohio State offensive lineup. Brought to you by Alamo Rent-A-Car. Speed and strength. Claret, the key man. The major challenge is being faced by this offensive line. The strength of the Cougars is this defensive front. They go about seven or eight deep, and they are a load, as offensive lines in the Pac-10 will tell you. But protection right away. Krenzel opens up with firepower deep into Cougar territory. Michael Jenkins, the junior from Tampa, Florida, on the receiving end. But credit the offensive line. There was no penetration along the front that time. Well, Ohio State says, all right, Washington State, if you want to play us eight or nine men in the box and you want to go one-on-one -on -one on against our athletes, we're going to post corner you right from the first play. No one, and you can see it from the double box right there, no one near Krenzel on the throw. That was simple pitch and catch. 33-yard gain. Krenzel has been completing better than 80% of his passes in his first two games. He makes the call at the line of scrimmage. He has yet to throw an interception. The junior, a very intelligent field general. Now the penalty flags come flying prior to the snap. I think Ivan Douglas, number 53, flinched over there just as Washington State was showing blitz. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yards, first down and 15. Please reset the clock. Now these are the fellows who must dominate along that front for Coach Price, and they are very, very good. Of course, they'll be looking for Maurice Lorette, number 13, all day long. <laughs> they'll be watching the freshman running back. Corners are on an island. You saw Trufant out there, and he gave up a 33-yard gain. He's the best of the bunch back there, and all Pac-10 defensive back. But the penalty is big as far as Washington State is concerned. Puts the Bucks in first and 15. Lorette, in his first carry, crosses the... Um, 35-yard line. So we have told you about Craig Krenzel. He's the only young man from Michigan on the Ohio State roster this year. Won his first career start at the Big House a year ago. And he started last week's game against Kent State with 11 straight completions. His brother, a pre-med student, and he hopes to join him if he doesn't get a good shot of the National Football League. That would be uh, number one for young Krenzel, who's playing very well this year. Now second down. It'll be third down, and that time Trufant was all over the wide receiver. Same play, Trufant says, all right, you got me once, but this time Michael Jenkins kind of ran a sloppy route, did not sell the post, and Trufant has seen it all. Like, as you mentioned, he's been on an island so long at Washington State, to, you know, Tom Hanks doesn't have anything on him. That's for sure. <laughs> third down now. He starts talking to Wilson pretty soon when the volleyball rolls by. They have a good kicker this year in Nugent, but you would think they would need about seven yards before they bring him into the play here. Third down and 13. Hit on the release, gets underneath the gamble. Gamble is down to the 25, and that should give the Buckeyes an opportunity at a field goal attempt here into the breeze, and that unit is coming onto the field right now. Smart play by Krenzel that time. He wanted to go downfield. Uh, Washington State brought six rushers, two outside linebackers, and he had to dump the ball off. Nice stop by Washington State, forcing Ohio State to try a, what, 43-yard field goal? Is that what it is? Yes, it is. And uh, here is Mike Nugent. His holders, the punter, Andy Groom, number 18. Groom sees that the kicker's ready. Blasts it into that breeze to put the Buckeyes ahead, 3-0. So the 33-yard completion on first down leads to a field goal, and Ohio State goes up. The Washington State team, Mike Nugent, who put the three points on the board for Ohio State, to kick it off, and he really muscled that into the breeze. And a young man who transferred from Florida State, one of the deep men, number one, DeVar Darling, who we've been hearing so much about, and here he comes from the nine-yard line. He's got quick to the 21 and down he goes now number 17 Jason Gesser we asked him what he'd like to accomplish 
on the first series. You never want to start the game off with going three and out, you know, and not, not completing any balls, getting two yards on a, on a run or anything like that. You always want to come out and establish something first. So I think just coming out, moving the chains, and, and, and get, finding that comfort zone for our offense is, is the main thing. And if he sounds a little bit like a Hawaiian to you folks, he is. Out of Honolulu, great high school program over there. And St. Louis High School sent so many fine players. A lot of them have gone to Brigham Young, haven't they, through the years? Yep. And here comes Jason Gessler. We had an injured uh, special team. Yeah, I think it's players. the tight end, Andrews, that uh, got really dinged on the play on the kickoff. He was walking to the wrong bench, and they have to help him off. Can't really snap this ball until he gets off. Got be 14 men on the field trainers and an extra guy this is a big big day for the Big Ten not so much the Pac-10 but the Big Ten is coming off two very disappointing seasons this is just one of a couple of matchups between the Pac-10 and the Big Ten now Jason Gessler sprints to the right spins picked up a couple of yards couldn't find the open man now Speaking of California and Michigan State, let's go to Johnson. So a blow to the Big Ten, but congratulations to Jeff Tetford, the former offensive coordinator with Mike Bellotti at Oregon, who is doing an unbelievable job with the Golden Bears. Running play is eaten up, and it's going to be third and long as C. Grant makes the play. Our Alamo Renicar lineups for Washington State. They're missing a big weapon here today. Wide receiver Jerome Riley. Colin Henderson, he has experience. He'll get a lot of snaps. The average size, folks, is a big offensive line. 6'5", 309. I think that's probably the biggest to share them in the Pac-10. I'm not sure about that. But it certainly is one of the bigger lines out west. Third down and seven now for Gesser. I want to tell you, folks, this crowd, this crowd is really into the game. Gesser's pass is complete. First down, and so on third down, he puts it into Scott Lundy's hands, and the junior from Vancouver, Washington, picks up the first down. Ohio State came with the zone blitz to the field. It's uh, almost NCAA blitz nowadays. Against these spread formations, you'll see guys coming off the corners all the time, but what happens is Washington State has seen it all. One guy comes, oh, I've seen that, Michael Doss, yeah, just dump it out, and three Ohio State defenders overrun, and that allowed the first down. Ball out to 33-yard line for Gesser and the Cougars. Not much there on the running play. John Tippins was the ball carrier. Well, this is such a great setting in here. We asked Mike Price what it was going to be like to come in to the Horseshoe in Columbus. I know how to beat these guys. I got the recipe to beat them. Get ahead of them and make them play catch up. Uh, what I don't know is how to get ahead of them. <laughs> uh, but that's what they seem to be able to do against other people. They get ahead and then they hold on and, and bad things happen to other teams at the beginning of the game and the Ohio State capitalizes on it. And here they are, the Buckeyes ahead, but only by a field goal. guesser has got a man. Oh, a beautiful pass to Darling. And the sophomore from Houston, by way of Florida State, picks up 13 yards against this Buckeye defense. There, folks, new <laughs> nickname for you. Fresh Prince, Will Smith, number 93. Oh, like it or not, here I come. Here go. <laughs> we got about six great linebackers. Well, they're not great, all of them, yet. But they've got three fine young freshmen. And the corners today are on the spot, and that gave me an indication of why. Darling looked like a big-time receiver, big-time weapon on that pass play. Now at midfield, short drop for Gesser. Flare out to the left side. Nothing doing. And Wilhelm, number 35, comes up and makes the play for the Buckeyes on Lundy. So we've told you about Gesser, who is a senior. He has had nine career games with 250-plus yards passing, one with 249, by the way. <laughs> 46 career touchdown passes as he moves up the Washington State charts. Just an outstanding quarterback. You can see how poised he is, how he moves around. Gary's told you about how he reminds him of Jake Plummer. Jonathan Smith, the junior from the Pasadena Junior College, checks into that backfield for the Cougars. He gets the call. Gash crosses the 45-yard line. Speaking of Oregon, let's go back to John and find out about the Ducks. 
Well, the Ducks began the year, of course, without Joey Harrington. He's now with the Lions, but they do have Ontario Smith, who runs this one in from three yards out as they take the lead on an Idaho defense that's given up over 1,000 yards in the first couple of games. Could be a long day for the Vandals. 7 0. And Washington State, John, has also beaten Idaho. They played Nevada in their opener in Seattle. Then they beat Idaho. Here comes a screen beautifully set up by Gesser. What a brilliant screen play that was. And Smith, the running back, out of bounds at the six yard line. You cannot ask for a better setup. Gesser was so patient, the Buckeyes thought they had a sack, and he burned them for 39 yards on that beautifully conceived screen pass. See, that's one of the nice things that Washington State has is the receiver this time, Jonathan Smith, the running back, excuse me, lines up to the wide side of the field and then shifts over. And you know what that Washington State has going from the Cougars is a lot of game film. Purdue moved the ball against this defense. They know that there's holes in the defense if they're determined to discipline to throw the ball. Three wide receivers. Yeah. And it'll be second down and goal. The Buckeyes have done an outstanding job of stuffing the run with that front. Wilhelm again in on the stop. Now they do have a huge wide receiver of Washington State, a basketball player, Mike Bush, number five. Yesterday you had the feeling as they came and worked out here that they were prepared to throw the jump ball to the big fella if they could isolate one of the corners going in from the five yard line. Now Bush is coming down to the left side. Right there. And they've got a linebacker walking out. Now they bring a safety out on him. No, it's Dustin Fox. They're small yeah, corner. bring Fox in. Yes. But he's got the matchup. Here it is. If he wants him, he's looking away from him. Other side, incomplete. Dustin Fox uh, listed at six foot, but Bush, as uh, Brent was saying, he's like six six. There it is. Fox has one on one, tries to grab him, but Bush, if that ball was thrown as a jump ball, and you're right, they threw it five or six times yesterday, getting used to that thing, and I think they like that matchup. The trouble is trying to get Ohio State's corners in that one on one matchup. Donnie Nicky, the safety, is right there to help if he wants to. Over the top of number 11, the corner Richard McNutt. They burn him on the fade. That's the young man who's expected to be the target. And again, darling Gary looks like a big time player. Well, the first one I would give to the quarterback. This one I would say, look at that reaction of the ball. He gave the quarterback plenty of field to loft it in there, and he had McNutt just at his mercy on that play. That was pitch and catch. Drew Dunning. Nails the extra point. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Krenzel trails for the first time in his career. The Ohio State quarterback has never been behind, but he is now, thanks to this pass from Gesser to Darling. Timeout. You know the story of DeVar Darling, had a twin brother, Devon, who died tragically working out down at Florida State. The Seminoles then did not clear DeVard medically to play for them. So there was a trainer up with the New York Jets who was friendly with one of Coach Price's sons, and he said, would your daddy like a receiver who can run about 4-4? And he said, you better believe it. Let's get him on a jet to Pullman. Young man had never been out to, uh, to <laughs> Washington, and he was on his way, and Price and the staff took one look at him and said, go for your physical. He passed it immediately, and here he is with a touchdown on the board. The Cougars kick it off again now. This time they do go into the end zone. Here comes Maurice Hall. And he's out to the 18-yard line. Now let's check in on the Trojans. Here's John Saunders. Well, Brandon, you know, Colorado is without Craig Oaks, the quarterback, so Carson Palmer wants to take advantage. He finds Malai Full McKenzie, who breaks a couple of tackles, then shakes his way downfield for the touchdown. USC on the board. Pete Carroll celebrating. 7-0 is the lead. Brent. Yeah, that's a positive start in Boulder for the Trojans here today. A lot of people like USC, like they like Washington State out west. Could be another big year for the Pac-10. Oregon State's supposed to have reloaded under Dennis Erickson. So here comes Krenzel. And Claret's going nowhere. That defensive front 
stones him at the 15 yard line. And the young man will find running against this defensive front a lot tougher than it has been in the previous two games. Watch Ryan Long, number 88, the playmaker on that defensive line. He gets, nobody can handle him. Two guys try to handle him up front. He's the one that breaks the play down and then it's just clean up time for the linebackers. Ryan Long, their nose tackle, 6'6", 286. He looks tall, but it doesn't look like they take his legs away from him very easily. The Cougars with an early lead. Brinzel changing up. He has three wide in this package. Clear it into a hole. Down to the 26-yard line with Eric Coleman, the free safety, making the stop. Needed to reach the 28 for a first down, but you could see the young man's burst. There's your Nissan drive summary. 11 plays, 80 yards, and Dory Commercial. Gary Danielson said, hey, Jason Gesser can oh, really throw the football. Five of six, and two of them were absolute beautiful timing routes. And you're right. That's that seniorism in him, being able to throw that screen. He did not give it away at all. Third down and three. Claret stopped by number 45. Trufant, the corner, came up, and the pro scouts will write that down. A corner who can cover and not afraid to come up and stick his helmet in there and make the tough stop. So the key plays for the Cougars on their scoring drive. This screen pass beautifully dropped off. Smith down the sideline, 39 yards on third and four. Then the fade, Darling breaks away from the corner and it's touchdown Washington State. Now Groom punts it. Fielded at the 29 and here's Trufant. Man, this young man does everything. Uh -huh. Defense passes, makes tackles, returns punts. Gessler and the Cougars have got it again. Four wide receivers for Price against Trussell's defense. Pressure on those corners again. They run the draw play out of it. And Tippins, the ball carrier, explodes to the 42-yard line for a first down. Michael Doss makes the play, but this is an 18-yard gain. And let's talk about what Washington State wants to do. First of all, spread them out, and exactly what they did right there, spread them out, a lot of quick throws, keep those linebackers moving, and then run the ball. You must keep running the ball. Ohio State wants to bloody their noses, but they must have patience, because there's gonna be a lot of blitzes, and when you get a chance, just like the first play, throw the deep ball. Three wide to the left, motion to back to the right. Basically, you're isolated one-on-one -on -one to the right, and there he goes. Oh, this is like stealing right now against this defense. The Cougars are an experienced passing team, and folks, the Buckeyes are under fire right now. Jack Aru, what about the crowd? Brent, they've gone deadly silent. It's, it's, you can hear myself talk. There's no crowd noise behind me. Washington State did like most teams that come in here to the horseshoe. They practiced with crowd noise pumped in, but they said, you know, we couldn't get 100,000 people to a practice. There's only 50,000 in our two counties. And I couldn't get them to talk twice or shout twice, Mike Price told me. They got the slut man on the safety now, and they'll run back against it. It'll be second down on this play. Must be very tough for Ohio State. The first play, Brent, when uh, Washington State ran the ball for that big gain, Ohio State had all three linebackers on the field. They did not believe they were going to throw the ball. They thought they were going to run. They still gashed them. So, you know, it's a chess match now. The Buckeyes are trying to match it. But you're right. I think the experience of Washington State is what's the difference right now. And the fellow you told me to watch for, Tyler Everett, is in as the nickelback on this. Third down and five. He's, He's a right freshman. There, there he there. is. Gessler has it spread again and through high because of pressure. I think it's very, uh, very difficult for Ohio State to stay with their three linebacker look. C. Grant, number six, was a corner a year ago, ago and he's playing linebacker now. But he still has linebacker responsibilities. To match this defense, the spread almost forces you to go nickel. I believe you have to have five defensive backs in the game. Washington State, I, they've got a swagger, folks. They're going for it here on fourth down. They're not playing field position. They think they can pick up five with Gesser. That's a touch of arrogance, but why not? It's a solid, good football team. The blitz, Gesser gets it off, incomplete. Good pressure. 
So the Buckeyes eat up fourth down, and they'll take it over with reasonably good field position. The pressure came from Kenny Peterson, the senior tackle from Canton. Nice change up by defensive coordinator D'Antonio. Mark D'Antonio, three linemen this time. They go three linemen and blitz Doss off the corner. That confuses Washington State. Give that one to the defensive coordinator for Ohio State. A change-up defense. They had Will Smith at linebacker and brought Michael Doss. That caused the breakdown. I'm very surprised they went for it on fourth down. I'd have pooched it down there and, and put it inside the tent. Prinzel brings the offense out. Lorette battles, spins free, but didn't gain much on it. An ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. 10-10-220, great rates all day, every day. Lincoln Financial Group, clear solutions in a complex world. And Alamo, the official rental car of the American vacation. We talked about what might be the hot spot for Ohio State, the two corners. The question mark for Washington State is the two safeties. Remember, a year, a year ago, Lamont Thompson and Billy Newman were their two stars. Two new players, Coleman and Williams, have to answer the bell. Claret has carried five times for only 11 yards. So Krenzel's going to go airborne, and it's an underthrown pass that time. Chris Vance, the senior from Fort Myers. And uh, a reminder that tomorrow, the IRL Chevy 500 will be coming to you from Dallas. Jack Aroot will be on the way. Jack, tell us about this race. Well, Brent, let's tell you about qualifying, which was just completed. Neither Sam Hornish Jr. leads in the points by 12 over Elio Castro Nevis, won the pole. Fedor Mira got that, a rookie. Hornish Jr. will start third, Castro Nevis in 10th. It's going right down to the last lap, Brent. All right, Jack, great update. <laughs> Stay tuned, everybody. We got Jack Aroot on the story. Third down now on 11. Frenzel, pressure, steps up beautifully, got a man, dropped. Had a pass dropped at the 35-yard line by his go-to guy, number seven, Chris Gamble. I think Jason David might have gotten his hand on that one. I'm not sure. The ball was poorly thrown, and the receiver, uh, was it Vance? Gamble. Gamble. I think he had to slow down on this one. Watch the ball. He slowed down. Let's see if David comes across. He got his hand. Looks like he knocked it out of there. He sure a did. Poorly <laughs> thrown ball, or that would have been a first down. Because he had him. Yes. Didn't he wide yes. open. And now Groom back on the field to punt. Here's Drew Fought over to make the fair catch at the 26 yard line. 341 to go in the opening quarter. The Buckeyes marched down and kicked a field goal, and the Cougars answered with the touchdown. Watch how Gamble has to slow down for the ball, and that allows for Jason David to just put his hand and pop it through. That's a brilliant play by Jason David. It was wonderful. Wasn't it getting yep. that hand in there like that? That's a guy who's used to playing in space. That's what he's done for a couple of years, and he's used to being out there. Now it's Gesser and the Cougars back on the attack. with the running play for a couple of yards. That's Jermaine Green getting the first ball from scrimmage. That's 104 yards of offense here for the Cougars in the first quarter. Yeah, one thing that's popped uh, in my mind so far with Washington State is they're much better off with wide receivers on both sides. When they kind of flood the field with three wide receivers to one side, it looks like Ohio State is comfortable with that formation. They're less comfortable with wide outs going on both sides in the slot. And what do they do? White outs on both sides. <laughs> Balance the field. A How about bit. five of them? Need the eight yards for the first down. And the whistle. We got right of the snap. Full start on the offense. Five yards. Remains well, second tonight down. our uh, Day Prime doubleheader wraps up with two great regional games. Most of you are going to see Nebraska against Penn State, Big 12 against the Big 10. Then the rest of you will see Texas take on North Carolina, the Big 12 against the ACC. Tonight, remember, it starts at 8 
Eastern time. Man, I got to hook up someplace. Gary, I know you're driving home. I got to get someplace where I watch both of them. Radio, you know, radio. I'm a radio guy. You can get the radio guy. I'll be, you know. <laughs> Got to be a champs or some joint we can find yeah. tonight. Here's Gesser going to drop it off to the side now, but no first down on that play. And the Buckeyes with some alert coverage that time by Donnie Nicky, one of the veteran safeties that Gary told you about. And Donnie Nicky, he's got big because we saw him as a freshman. But let's talk about Jason Gesser. He's the the marquee guy, and he's got the offense moving over 100 yards here in the first quarter. And when you look at him, you just see a lot of things that you love in a quarterback. A competitive guy, absolutely fearless, hurt a number of times. And I love this, instinctive. He's a playmaker, and then that Hawaiian hang loose. Nothing bothers this guy. A lot of confidence in the Washington State offensive line. Guessers back, they flare the running back, and the Buckeyes were coming, and he hit the open man, but it is short of the first down because of a beautiful stop by Dustin Fox, the sophomore from Canton. That was Mike Bush on the receiving end that time. Keep an eye on Jason Guesser. You see at the silent count, when he lifts his heel, Ohio State is moving their defense. That's their key to run these blitzes. It's catching them a little off balance right now. Fourth and short, will Are they? they gonna go? They're thinking about oh. it over there. No, they'll try to draw them off sides, maybe, then punt, won't they? Or use a timeout. I mean, Mike really, he, he, he wanted to go. I mean, he really does. It's, really? It's, it's you know what short. that means? You know what it means to me? You get a new five-year contract, you're ready to go for That's right. It. And you know, if you get a winning record, you get another year attack. <laughs> he's got the best He's got the best contract in football. Got it this week. What a nice man. And uh, uh, they're, talk <laughs> they're talking about it uh, right now on that sideline. But uh, obviously, the percentage play is to punt this down the yeah. field and play. Uh, I, I, I think so. Would you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, I thought he should have punted last time, you know. So he's got the wind behind him. You have an, you have a, a punter that really hangs the ball high. I think you give the, the defense has been stopping Ohio State. I think punt it down there. You got the lead. Why make a bad play early? Yeah, here they come. Uh, Kyle Bosler. And, and folks, you want to see this leg. It, uh, this is a big, he, he looked like a tight end. When he came on a field, I, those I had no idea he was, a, he was a punter. Look at this. He played a little high school quarterback. And Doss said, let's go. So it'll be Bossler to Doss. High snap. Oh. And he had to just get that one out of there. Doss fumble! And I believe McNutt dropped yes, on it for did. Ohio State. Recovered it alertly at the 29-yard line. But that was almost a critical turnover. But you know, when you th that's the reason why you punt. I think so. I mean, you can't give Ohio State the ball right there. Doss comes up on it. This is one he could have returned. He coughs it up. Washington State takes him out, and McNutt smartly. That's exactly how you do it. You take it, turn your shoulders. Yeah, McNutt is being congratulated on that sideline, too. You better believe that. And uh, Doss knows that he let that one just get away from him. And now Krenzel and the uh, the Buckeye offense trot back out onto the field. When's Ohio State going to be able to bloody their noses? I haven't seen it at all. No, sir. Claret into a hole. That's nine yards on first down that time, and you can just see the phenomenal talent of this uh, young man from Youngstown. Jack? Brett, you want to watch closely Maurice Claret, not through the first quarter, second quarter, or third quarter, but see how he runs in the fourth quarter. Jim Trestle, the head coach, told us that this is going to be the game where Maurice Claret gets pounded upon. He said, we'll find out just what the true freshman is like physically by quarter number four. He's getting a lot of carries. Yeah, he got him in second and one with that nine yard run coming right back the great ones like to have it in their hands and there's the first down folks that's a freshman and uh, he was carrying three white jerseys with him out to the 45 yard line and that's why the crowd loves this young man he exploded with 175 yards and uh yeah to listen to jim trussell talk about his recruiting trip uh, when he went to, you know, the head coach is allowed one trip to a high school when he recruits a young man. And of course, being the former Youngstown coach, Trestle had an eye on him all along. So Trestle went to his high school. He watched every game from beginning to end and said not once, not once, was Maurice Claret ever caught from behind. Folks, that is unbelievable. All those little sophomores and juniors in high school, they couldn't tackle him. Don't feel so bad now, do they? Exactly. <laughs> yes, they have, though. It's pretty good to be fanned on. So there's the end of a first quarter. The Cougars of Washington State with Darling on the receiving end for Coach Price. Go ahead, 7-3 in Columbus. We've got timeout. You're
watching college football on ABC Sports Championship Television. Those numbers in the upper left, you see that yellow uh, number 11, that's the uh, the coaches' rankings. I believe Washington State, according to the writers, was number 10 this week. And the, the Buckeyes have jumped to number number 8. So two uh, highly rated teams, and who knows? This uh, could be game one of a two-game series. These, both <laughs> these teams can wind up in Pasadena, the Rose Bowl. And, uh, Prinzel's got time. Got one on one. Incomplete. Boy. He couldn't hook up. Jenkins had his man. It looked Absolutely. Like. When you throw it into the kicker's net, you know that's a bad throw. I mean, right into the net he threw it, and Jenkins had a two-man route. Ohio State is going to go for the home run ball, and he throws it into the kicking net. Gary, I got, I got some quarters have said, some quarterbacks have told me that it's harder to throw with the wind Absolutely. than against it. Is that the, true? The deep ball sometimes is. You know, I'll take the I'll take the wind with the deep ball, but a touch pass is I'd rather throw into the wind because it turns it over a little. It turns bit. it over a little yep. bit for you. Second down and uh, ten. They were blitzing, and they hit it with the run, and that's the backup Lydell Ross, and he's off for the races. To the 19-yard line, they blitzed the run, and they didn't get it. 36 yards, the best play from scrimmage for the Buckeyes. Remember when I said Ohio State needed to be patient. You watch the blitzing come. If you're patient against these guys, they're going to get you. But eventually, you're going to pop it. And when you pop it, there's nobody back there. There's no safeties coming up to help because the safeties have already blitzed on the play. And that's the big place. Stay patient. They get you. You get them. Loretta is lining up as a fullback. They can throw to him. He's an excellent receiver, but they run him from that up back, and uh, the Cougars were not fooled. Do you see that bad stance by Claret? I don't think he's ever been in a stance before. As a tailback, he's always had his hands on his knees. He was trying to look like he was trying to hide in there at fullback on that one. Didn't work. He sure did. <laughs> it is man to man to the outside. Nothing has changed. Trufant, David, Jason David, both of them are matched up man to man, and Ohio State has a side adva size advantage on David, just the other, just the way, the size advantage for the Cougars. Second down and nine. Oh, the freshman is pounded when he reaches the the 14 yard line, and uh, Clarette has carried now 10 times here in the first half of this game, so the young man wants it in his hands, and uh, He's getting a chance here today. You know, I, I thought it looked like he slipped as he started going out on that ball. You see him right there, his stats on this team. And he's kind of ginger with his ankle right there as he took a big pop. And Coach Tressel told us yesterday, right, Brent? For the first time, I think he's going to feel what it's like to get hit by major college football players. Yeah, I think he feels this one right now. You better believe it. Third down and five. Shotgun. There was movement. And uh, the whistle. And uh, even though there was movement and the play was stopped, uh, Claret took a hit. Yeah, uh, he did. Yeah, man, uh, apologized. That was uh, Shavies, the defensive end from Oregon. Right of the snap. Up. False start on the offense. Five yards. Still third down. So it's okay to be hit when you're carrying, but when it's whistled dead yeah. and somebody's still going to pop you and, now, you know, like. Virgil that. Williams got him the time before, so that back to back times, he took one right in the chops. And, you know, if you're going to be a Big Ten tailback, you know, ask Eddie George. Yeah, you know, ask Archie Griffin. You're going to have to learn to take hits. Buckeyes need 10 here. Ball inside the 20 yard line in that red zone area. Prinzel has not thrown that accurately here so far. Use that H back motion. Sacked at the 27 yard line. And there's the team that led the Pac 10 in sacks last year. Coming up with one right here. Ryan Long, number 88. Here's the box. That. Here's the box, Brent. Excuse me. How about this one? Ten men in the box. One guy out here, man to man, true font. Ten men in the box. That's the way you get those sacks like that. Before he can throw the ball, you get to the quarterback. Mike Nugent will attempt a 43 yarder. If successful, this would pull the Buckeyes to within a point. Ball's gone. He did just that. So Nugent has put all six of the Buckeye points on the scoreboard. They trail it with 12.09 left in the second. 
Now here's our Pontiac performance drive summary. Lydell Ross had the big run on that series of 36 yards. Nugent caps it with the field goal. And it's 7 6 with the ball on the tee for Mike. Darling and Coleman are back deep for the Cougars. This one will be coming out of the 20 yard line. Coleman will take a knee. Jason Yesser has got off fine in this game, 8 and 11. And the ways this offense works against any pass rush is you got a lot of quick throws. Same thing Purdue runs. You have teams that don't have great big guys up front. You throw a lot of quick releases, quick passes, and Gesser does all that and makes plays by himself. Tough guy to stop. Washington State keeps its personnel over on the sideline for as long as possible until they tell them to go so that the coaches upstairs cannot see what package they've got on the field. Let's see if Washington State doesn't come back to that screen pass that was good to them earlier in the, in the first quarter. Bush goes off to the right side. Takes Fox with him. And uh, Honig wants to uh, straighten things out down there at the center. And uh, I don't know that he knows we're back. I guess he does now. That was <laughs> it. He was thinking we were out. We appreciate that. We pay a few bills, but uh, we were already back. So it's first down and 10. And the Cougars will see if they can run. And Virgil Williams comes from one side, and Eric Coleman, number 27, who playing safety, but he was a corner last year, so he had corner speed, or perhaps Claret might have taken it to the house. So Claret really broke it loose that time, passes midfield. Ross now replaces him. And here's Ross, nowhere. Lost about a yard on the play. Myra Davis. Now, we asked the quarterback, Krenzel, to talk about Claret, and here's what he had to say. I think the most impressive thing about him is mentally how quickly he picked up the offense, how quickly he picked up, you know, the game of college football at this level and the complexity of the defenses and, you know, his blitz reads and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's just been amazing what he's been able to accomplish. He's back, and uh, he is a tremendous receiver, and that's in the game plan. They haven't been able to get to it because they've needed his blocking on pass plays. And this is to Vance. Vance to the 35-yard line, another Buckeye touchdown, and this is the most impressive-looking uh, drive they've got. Well, this is, this is what I think Ohio State needs to do. They need to spread the field with those receivers and, and throw some short routes to them and kind of spread that defense of Washington State. That was about 35 yards premature, wasn't I? <laughs> First time. <I> was... <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Yeah. We'll get a replay of it later and fix it, right? <laughs> That's right. Let's get, we'll do a voiceover. And the whole thing, we'll never know. First down and 10. Same thing. Yeah, see, they have to withstand. Oh, you gotta, Gamble dropped it. You got to catch that ball. That's just easy, easy yards. Washington State does not believe Ohio State will do it over and over again. They're giving them that throw. And half time I told you, they must establish those two wide receivers. Otherwise, Washington State's going to put nine guys in the box. They won't be able to run the ball. You know, right now, the other Greg play Prince, they've got is Claret throwing the ball. Yes, we he got does. a second and 10. We're in that attack zone. He threw it pretty well in practice. Searches for daylight. He was very patient. Good looking. Young running back. And uh, you'll see some great football Monday night, folks. I'd be there for this one. Nine Eastern. You got to want to see what the fun and gun and Steve Spurrier is going to do against Donovan McNabb. Now, now, Spurrier lit it up last week. Had Shane Matthews. You would have thought he was a pro bowler the way he was throwing a ball last he week. He might be. I'm telling you. <laughs> Donovan McNabb criticized by uh, Troy Aikman and uh, during the broadcast by Troy last week. So Donovan will be fired up to prove something. And uh, that's what the fun and gun turned loose. So I, I wouldn't miss the Eagles and the Skins on, on Monday night at, uh, at 9 o'clock. That'll be a dandy. Now play fake. Prinzel in trouble. And takes off. Got the first down. An intelligent run 
He's not going to outrun your defense, but he got to that corner and picked up the first down. That was a big play because Ohio State, in third and about three, went with an overloaded offensive line. Four men to the right side, the tight end to the right side, only two backs in the backfield to try to trick play. And Washington State said, uh-uh, we're not tricked. And Krenzel made a first down out of nothing that time. Those tricks sometimes against veteran defenses just don't work. There's Claret, right side, he's got the angle. Breaks a tackle. Claret out of bounds inside the five yard line. First and goal, Buckeyes. 20 more yards for Claret, who is now over 100 yards. Oh, what a freshman sensation number 13 is. At halftime, there was some question whether Ohio State would be able to run the ball. I think Claret said to the guys, give me the ball. I'll show you I can run the ball against these DBs. We know you can cover. Can you tackle a 230-pound tailback in the secondary? Well, they give it right back to the youngster. First and goal inside of five, and here it comes. End zone, touchdown! Now I can say it. <laughs> he blocks, he runs with great speed, and on this drive, he really ran with determination, didn't he? Broke tackles, moved the pile. That's why he was the USA Today Offensive Player of the Year. I guess we've seen that here today, haven't we, folks? Remember, he came to Ohio State and, and attended spring football practice. Nugent for the extra point. The Buckeyes regain the lead. Remember, they kicked a field goal and went up 3-0 thanks to Maurice Claret. Watch now as the young man shows great determination and those legs drive him into the end zone. Time out. Gesser's turn here. He is, uh, one thing I got to say about Jason Gesser here, he, he's missing one of his big prime receivers, Jerome Riley, in this game. Number 84 did not be able to play this game. When we asked Mike Price, he was asked, what is the most underrated player on the team? He said Jerome Riley. Who's the sleeper of the team? Will Dirty. Both those guys are not playing in this football game. Guess where to throw again on first down. Got the middle. Deflected. Intercepted. What a great grab. Matt Wilhelm, the senior linebacker. That's just a great athletic play by Wilhelm for the pick. This is their run middle linebacker, number 35. Watch him react to the bootleg and run. He has to run with a wide receiver. He lays out, watch this one hand, tips it to himself. And a senior from Elyria, Ohio right there, tips that ball up. And, you know, he suffered last year, Brent, with a bad ankle. He had to have surgery in the offseason, didn't be able to go to spring football. But he's got his speed back. He's got his game back. And, as you said, Wilhelm, but Kaiser Wilhelm makes the play. The Kaiser did it. <laughs> First down now for the Bucks. Florette's the running back. He'll get another call. And now he's driving defensive linemen back. Let's take a look at this last drive. It's just one of the most impressive we've seen in a while from a, from a freshman running back. There's the speed. Then it became the power. And the drive of those piston-like legs to the end zone. He has carried the ball 16 times for 113 yards. And the Buckeye touchdown in this game. They lead it 13-7. They have a second down and seven. Four-man rush. Moret runs behind the left side for a couple, and that was Long making the uh, stop. We check in again with Jack. Well, Brett, Maurice Claret came to the winter session or the spring session here at Ohio State. It didn't take him long to become a leader. 
He said, in fact, that one of the reasons why he came to Ohio State is because he felt Ohio State had fallen on some hard times. And he said, for the last couple of years, it's time for us to put our foot down and say, this is Ohio State, and we're back. And he said, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that happens. And he's certainly doing it here today, isn't he? Third down. Prinzel steps away, going to throw it. He's got an open man, Vance. God, drop ball at about the 18-yard line. Well, the, the original play was supposed to be a quick out to Vance near the sideline. When Krenzel broke the po pocket, Vance smartly turned up field. One of the things you have to know as a young quarterback is when you're in motion, your pass stays in motion. Watch Vance run the out right here and then up when he sees Krenzel. But Krenzel's running to his right and the ball drifts on him and Vance, that would have been a tough catch. That ball drifted right out of bounds. Krenzel, he keeps it in play, it's a touchdown. So the interception oh, nice hit. did not the prove the costly fair catch. Nice as job. the fair catch That's was made at the 10-yard uh, line. And uh, Gary, take a look for us at our Jeep rushing playbook. Well, you saw Claret run that lead ISO for Ohio State. But, you know, it may look like a boring play, but a lot of things happen. If everybody lines up straight, it's simple. Take the guy in front of you, run to the weak side, fullback takes the backer, you run. But the defense doesn't promise to stay there. They shift one way, everyone has to read. The guard in the center switch, the fullback reads outside, and the halfback, that's how Corbett worked the long way. They also go the other way. These guys on defense, they never do what they're supposed to do. Watch it, this is the cutback play. You saw Eddie George do it for years. Jason Gesser in, Tippins is the running back for the Cougars. And here is Tippins for three yards. You know, we thought about Vance out of Fort Myers, and you think about Ohio State. Here are the players from the state of Florida. I believe there are 10 of them. Anyway, it is the second highest number from any state. Obviously, Ohio is clearly number one. But this is a lucrative state for Ohio State recruiting. They go down there, look at the Vance, Gamble, Jenkins. They get their wide receivers. They get their speed base out. Look at this, 82, 10, and three. No players from Pennsylvania playing for this Buckeye team. Or, or at least in the not the top three. Second down and seven now. Flair outside. There's the young man that you have talked about, Henderson. And Doss comes up to make a great stop. Yes, that's what, if you talk to the Ohio State coaches and Jim Tressel,